Hey guys, welcome to Wild Camp Nano. We're still in lockdown, so we are so we're in the back garden today. Uh, not doing any bushcraft right now, it's actually today we're going to compare the Polish Lavu sizes, the size one, the size two, and the size three. On our great Facebook page, I'm part of Lavu Owners Worldwide, like worldwide, sorry. Uh, there's been a bit of a debate recently about the sizes and, well, mostly ranges around basically how the size 3 is so expensive and is it worth the extra money for the size 3. I'm not here to discuss whether or not it's worth it, that's a personal preference and the prices are getting a bit silly so I'll leave that for another day. What I'm here is to purely not really try and show this difference in size. Uh, a few weeks ago I proved the sizes variables using math, some basic Pythagoras term. Uh, based on expected sizes of a size 1, 2, size 3 and showed how they varied. Today I'm out in a real, real world situation in my back garden with a size 1, a size 2 and a size 3 and I'm going to show you my findings. The first thing I want to say is we used standardised sizes of 170 centimeters, 180 centimeters and 190 centimeters for the size 1, size 2, size 3. That is a standardized sizing but these are mass produced military surplus items and well in my experience I only have well I have five or six seven abbeys now uh, throughout my collection. I found that most of them stuck to this sizing but today I'm going to show you I actually bought a size 1 specifically to do some testing ironically. Uh, the size one is an anomaly so it is and I'm going to show you now but I have laid out a few different scenarios here to try and show the size differences and I'm going to talk through before I show you this stuff I'm going to talk you through some of my controls the first thing is I've used the same centre pole for all for the Lavu but when I picked the size one which I'll show you now I made sure that all the corners were equidistant from the centre pole to try and get it as fair as possible and from that I erected the size 2 and size 3 to try and keep a uniform shape. I have also uh, taken the other half of the Polish Lavus which I have measured and they both match up, they both match, they're all three are matching pairs and I'm going to show you first of all how the sizes match up to each other and talk about a few of the anomalies that make the calculation not as simple as just basic a, a credit with b plus c squared so we're we'll going to look at that now as well okay guys in our scenario one i've laid out three lavus size one top of size two and top of size three as you can see i'm trying to show that they're not they're all laid out as balanced as possible but you know you obviously can't get them taught layout, but I've tried my very best to keep them as uniform as possible. This is not scientific, it's just trying to be as accurate as possible. So the first thing I want to say is, as I come down here, I don't know if I can be able to take you down without it going all monk wonky, let's see. So first of all, I'm going to try and show you the size. And so the size 3 is about 190, just slightly under 190. The size 2 is slightly under 180. But as I say, my size 1 is an anomaly. I expect this to be 170, but the size one is actually 175. So the question always arose, is a size one too small? And the answer is, well, depends. That's, that's five centimeters bigger than expected. Okay guys, as you can see here, I've set up a rig of the three lavus on top of each other, size one, size two, size three. Uh, they basically are all in the same centre pole, so obviously the size two and size three are on top of the size one in the material, but I think that the top there is going to be negligible, the actual effect of the material, so we're assuming that they're all equal. As I say, I pegged out the bottom one equidistant to the centre pole, all round and then I use that as a guide to peg the other two out so hopefully they're pretty equal so first of all as you can see obviously uh, down here sorry the sunlight but down here we have it's 
spacing. So from left to right, we have the size three, the size two, the size one. And obviously the size one space between the size one and two is about half the size of the two and the three. That's expected because of the same my size ones in a normal way. And it's actually 175 rather than 170. I'm going to bring you down. Sorry, this video is a bit choppy. I've got neighbors out cutting grass and cutting hedges in the sun. And I'm using a new gimbal to try and test some things um, while I'm here. But as you can see, the spacing from the three to the two, peg out point to peg out point, is just about five inches. And then it's about two and a half to three from the two to the three. So it is, uh, which would be consistent with the spacing we've seen on the Lavus over on the other test. Uh, the Mads would suggest that it should be six inches, but uh, obviously there's anomalies here, so there is uh, peg out, tension of the material, slope of the ground, there's just so many variables so there is, but that the general consensus I'm trying to show is that five inches this side, five inches the other side, the difference between a size three and a size two is 10 to 12 inches, not two to four as sometimes is thought on the form, unfortunately. Uh, whether or not it's a big deal to you or not, that's your choice. I'm just trying to show the size. And, uh, one thing I would like to mention is when I was pegging it out, when I was pegging out the whole thing, the two side, the two button rows, the two sides of the buttons on them, that's where we do our measurements from. But there's massive, I say massive, there's definitely variations between panel to panel and how they're stitched together. They're not all equal sizes, they're not all equal lengths. So this is obviously a test, but if you did it the other way, widthwise, from back to front, you find that the spacing varies because they're not equal. So, not. so obviously there's going to be differences in the material difference in the size of the lava is say I've got a size one there I'm kind of happy I've got a size one that's so big because I thought that it wouldn't be much good for me but to be honest the difference between it and the size two is a couple of inches and will not be as noticeable especially for the kids and hopefully this kind of shows you an idea of the sizes of the lavos. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. As I say, I was just trying to show real work with real world demonstration how the mass held up and how the size varies. Obviously I only got a 10 inch differential between my size of two and size three, which were 180 and 190 centimeters respectively. So <sighs> There's more at play than just basic Pythagoras theorem. But hopefully it'll give you an idea of the fact that the size differential is significant and it's something to consider. In another video, I probably will try to do some more real life scenarios, put in an air mat, a 190cm air mat, and show you when you lie on top of it. Because obviously there's slopes to the labu. So I'm measuring point to point at the widest points. But down there, there's ways to space because, you know, you lie. So when I lie my size 2 on my mat, my mat touches the side walls. And then when I lie my mat, my mat's 190 and I'm slightly shorter than that, uh, 5 foot 10. My feet or my head, depending on how I lie, will be close if not touching the lavvy because the space is diminished on the angle. So it is. So if you're lying on the floor on a foam pad, you will get more space here. If you're lying on an air mat, thick air mat, you get less space just because you're bringing the floor height up here. So there's lots of variables to sleeping. Of course, you can sleep in a curve. If you take out the center pole, you get the widest point. There's multiple, multiple variables. Uh, but hopefully that airs a bit of an, an insight of the size variables of the size, the sizes of the lavu. And as I say, if you like this video, give it a wee subscribe. I do more lab view videos than I care to admit. I quite enjoy my lab views, as you know. So, this one's especially for the lab owners worldwide. So, I do hope you enjoy it, guys. And hopefully, someone finds it a bit informative and proves some real, real world situations. Thanks, guys.